Hello friends, welcome back to the Divorce Broadcast Channel. My name is Manny Sagara, coming to you from Miami, Florida. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about getting your mind right when you're going through a divorce process. Specifically, some tips on how to channel your energy the proper way as opposed to channeling it perhaps in a not so proper or negative way. Let's start off with the obvious. A divorce process can be very devastating to some people. It can cause a lot of anxiety and stress. It can cause a lot of emotional distress. It can cause financial hardship. If there's children involved, if there's pets involved, it can cause all types of anxiety. So when this is the case and it's one of my clients, I like to give them a couple options on how to channel their energy the right way. First and foremost, I am a big proponent of individual counseling. Uh, the courts do not frown upon individual counseling and I think it is imperative for you to have somebody to talk to that's 100% on your side, that will be your cheerleader, and that most importantly will give you the tools on how to deal with all of the emotions during the divorce process. This actually ends up helping your case because you're more calm and level-headed when you speak with your attorney, you're more calm and level-headed when you attend mediation, and you are more calm and level-headed when you have to go to trial or are called as a witness. Also, you may consider starting a workout regimen. Working out is one of the most phenomenal ways to help you during situations that are stressful. You can go for a jog, go for a walk. I like joining a gym, getting a personal trainer, or joining one of those classes and working out your stress there. The side benefit of that is that you will find people at the gym who are very supportive and will help you through these traumatic times. In addition to that, one of the best things you can do is spend time with family and friends. They are your biggest fans sometimes. They may, you know, they may talk a little smack about your spouse, but you know, hopefully uh, it won't be too bad. But spending time with your family, eating family recipes, uh, eating some comfort food, hanging out with them and watching Netflix or whatever, I think that is a great opportunity for you to deal with the divorce process. Also hanging out with friends. Finding that old friend that you haven't seen in a long time, reconnecting with them, telling them what's happening. Uh, I hear a lot of times that there's no better therapy than a bottle of wine and three awesome girlfriends. So I think hanging out with friends, reconnecting is another way to channel your energy the proper way. Also, you may want to consider volunteering. There are so many people in need in the community that volunteering would be an exceptional way for you to try to, to go out there, get your mind off of what's happening. The side benefit of volunteering is that it helps you gain a little bit of perspective. You will see that there are a lot of people in need and a lot of people in really bad situations. You will also see that, that people who volunteer usually are really good people and you will find an other community of support. Finally, you may consider journaling. Journaling is great because it gives you an opportunity to write down what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what has been happening, and it has the side benefit of possibly providing some information that you can give to your attorney to help your case. So just to recap, five suggestions on how to channel your energy properly. That would be number one, individual counseling or therapy. Number two, starting an exercise regimen. Number three, spending time with the family and friends. Number four, volunteering. And number five, journaling. Now, on the other hand, here are some ways that you can channel your energy in the opposite or improper way. Number one, you can start abusing substances. You can start drinking too much. You can start using recreational drugs too much. That's always a bad idea because if the, if the other spouse or the opposing attorney catches wind that you are abusing substances, 
they will file a motion to have you drug tested in court and a court will order you to get drug tested. I've seen people have to drop pee for once a week for 26 weeks uh, to prove that they weren't uh, using drugs. I have also seen people you have to use devices where they have to blow into a tube in order to either have time sharing or to uh, see their children. You don't want to be that person. Number two, you don't want to get arrested during the course of your divorce proceedings. And when I say arrested, I mean for pretty much anything. You don't want to get arrested for fighting anybody. You don't want to get arrested for a DUI. You don't want to get arrested for uh, criminal mischief. Um, and all of these things happen in cases. And guess what's going to happen if you get arrested and you have child custody issues? They are going to bring that information into your family court case and use it against you. So it is not a good idea to get arrested during a divorce proceeding. Number three, don't start stalking your spouse. Don't send a drone to spy on them. Don't put a GPS marker in their car. Don't go over to their house and vandalize their, uh, their furniture, their house, their vehicle. Uh, don't go on to, uh, to calling them and, get, and getting arrested for stalking them. That is always a bad thing. Do not stalk your spouse during the course of a divorce proceeding. Because if getting arrested, if you think getting arrested is bad, getting arrested because you committed a crime against your spouse is even worse. You will probably lose your children for a little while if you do that. Also, be careful on social media. Remember that if you use social media and you, talk, you start talking smack about your spouse publicly, attorneys like me can download that information and use it against you. Also, while you're messaging your spouse, be careful what you message them. WhatsApp doesn't automatically erase. Neither do text messages. There's a thing called downloading where they can download those messages, print them out, give them to their, your, their attorney, and use it against you. So don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Finally, don't speak to children about the case. It happens all the time. Parents get caught up in court, there's an order against them, and the first thing they do is they talk to their kids about what's happening in the case. Bad idea. If a judge finds out that you're telling the children what is happening in the case, you are going to get into a lot of trouble. So, quick recap on five ways not to channel your energy during the divorce process. Number one, don't get arrested. Always a bad idea. Number two, don't use substances. Substance abuse is a bad thing. Number three, don't stalk your ex-spouse. Bad idea. Number four, social media may not be your friend. Don't abuse it and don't send nasty messages. And number five, and probably most importantly, don't talk to the kids about the court proceedings. So thought it would be helpful for all of you to know some of the good ways on how you should channel your energy that will help your case, will help your attorney, and some of the bad ways that may actually hurt your case and hurt what you're trying to accomplish in divorce court. As I said before, divorces are difficult, um, but these are some of the ways that perhaps you can cope with them properly. Once again, my name is Manny Sagara. Remember that each case is different. If you know anybody that's going through this type of thing, we'd be happy to help. Please subscribe to our channel. Hit the like button. We have offices in Miami and Orlando. Se habla español. And if you want to schedule a consultation, look us up at www.cigaralawfirm.com. Remember, during the divorce process, get your mind right.